Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Angela. Today you're getting a bonus video because I wanted to participate in Heidi Sambles monthly DIY challenge. If you enjoy farmhouse home decor, be sure to check out Heidi's channel. I'll link it in the description box below along with the playlist so you can check out all the other creators. The theme for this month's video is Valentine's Day. So with that, let's get into it. For this first project, I'm taking these hearts that I had, I got years ago, I don't even remember where, but I painted this in middle school, so it is the ugliest colors I've ever seen. I don't know why I painted it like this, but I'm gonna take this out to my garage and cut those hearts apart, taking the shelves off and sanding them really well to make them nice and smooth. Then I'm gonna take this buffalo check fabric that I got from the Dollar Tree and I bought a few of these, I thought I would need more, but one of these fabric squares was enough to cover all three of the hearts. I am only gonna cover the tops though, and I'm not gonna wrap it around the sides. I'm gonna measure out my heart, um, tracing it around the back side of the fabric, and then I'm just gonna cut it out with my scissors. And before I glue it down, I'm going to paint the hearts with um, like a light gray color. I used Martha Stewart Dolphin Gray. And I don't show that because honestly, I don't think I need to always show what I'm painting. It's pretty self-explanatory in my opinion, <laughs> but it's just a gray paint. Then I'm just gonna hot glue my fabric hearts on top of my wooden hearts after the paint has dried. The next thing I'm gonna do is take my scissors and kind of rough up the edges of the hearts to make it look a little distressed and torn. Then I took some red ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby along with some jute cord and just made two little bows and hot glued those to the top left corner. This is the middle sized heart. So then I'm just going to hot glue in little spots where I want the ribbon to kind of twist around and look like it's cascading down the heart. I did all three of my hearts a little different. So this middle one, it's glued to the heart, or the bow is glued to the top left. On the larger one, I did the top right. And then the smaller heart, I just glued a small bow in the center and didn't do the long tails like this. After I had the ribbon in place where I wanted it, I just took that jute cord and I kind of tucked it in around in between the ribbon so that I didn't have to glue that down. And I always just take my lighter to get off any of the fuzzies from the jute cord and to burn the edges of my ribbon so they don't fray. And here's a look at how it turned out. I love the way these look. I love that they're not all the same and I just think it looks so modern and something you could leave up all year long and not just for Valentine's Day. For this next project, I'm taking three of these heart boxes that you can find from the Dollar Tree. They also have ones with different shapes on the front. They're not all hearts, but we're just gonna use the drawer insert and I'm gonna paint all of these white with my homemade chalk paint. Next, I'm taking some black and white polka dot 
scrapbook paper that I got in a book from, I think it was from Joann's, it might have been Michael's, but I'm just going to cut down little squares to fit inside my box and take my glue stick to glue those in place. Next, I'm going to take my floral foam and cut it down to fit inside of the boxes. And I couldn't find anything else to cut this down with at the time. So I just used my T-square and it works. Whatever we have, right? Now I'm taking some floral arrangements that I got from the Dollar Tree. So I got three stems of these velvet roses. Um, I got one or two of these white I don't know what those are called and I can't read what it says, but these little white cascading looking florals. And then I got these red cherry blossoms from Amazon and I'll link those below. I thought they were a great deal and I love the dark color of the stem. So then I just took everything and played around with the arrangement, filling it all in until I thought it looked nice. And I'm so mad at myself because this la the last part, the last little detail I added to this, I, I, I don't know what happened either. I didn't hit record, I deleted the footage, I don't really know what happened, but I took these little wooden hearts from a project my son made me a few years ago. It was one of those little Lowe's wooden heart or wooden projects that they have all year round for kids to do. And I just cut them off of the little stem that they were on and took some hot glue and that tube confetti and just put it all over those hearts to give a little added dimension to this floral arrangement. And I really love how that added an extra element, but I wish I would have been able to show you guys that step. The last thing I'm going to add is just some reindeer moss, also from the Dollar Tree, just to cover up that floral foam and the bottom of all of these floral stems. And here you can see those cute little hearts that I made. I think this looks so cute sitting in my living room. This next project is my absolute favorite one of this video. I took one of these heart wreath forms from the Dollar Tree and first I'm going to take my wire cutters and cut off the four bottom wires that are holding that center heart in place. I leave the top two on because I do want that center heart to still look like it's floating and attached. Then I'm gonna take some of mac the macrame cord that I have. I had a bunch of scraps left over from another project, so I used those instead of using some new cords. So it does look a little messy for a little bit, but it definitely gets better once I clean it up. So I'm just gonna wrap it around the bottom, and I do intentionally leave some spacing. So you can see here I started to leave like a little triangle, and I do that all the way around. I leave like little areas that are just open with no macrame cord on them at all. I did want both sides to be symmetrical, so I started counting how many wraps I was doing on each side. <laughs> I did have to use a lot of hot glue also at the bottom and then also around the curves just so the cord would stay in place where I wanted it to be. I 
And here's how it looks. You can see all of that spacing and also how messy it looks, but I'm gonna go in and just cut off all those little edges that are sticking out. Next, I'm taking these beads that I got from Amazon and I cut open the bottom of that center heart so that I could slide the beads on. The darker ones, I just used my antique Waverly wax to paint those, um, but I did have them left over from another project, so I didn't specifically do that for this one. And I just alternated the colors between the dark and the light. And then once I got to the bottom, I just hot glued, I put a dab of hot glue on like the inside of the bead to hold it onto the wire. And then I also hot glued those two bottom beads to the very last one, if that makes sense. The, the two darker beads at the bottom to that light bead. Next, I'm going to show you the most fun part of this project, how to make this twisted macrame with the little feather at the end. And this is the first time I have ever macrame so I figured why not record it? I watched a few different YouTube channels and figured out what I needed to do. I'll leave the link to the video where I got this idea from in the description box below. It was a foreign channel, so I can't remember what the name of it was, but I'm gonna take two eight foot strands of my macrame cord and I'm gonna loop them around that first open edge at the bottom there and just create a lark's head knot. So to do that, you're just gonna loop it through and pull your strings through that loop. Next, what we're gonna do is create, I think it's called a cobra knot. Again, I'm not good with the terminology of macrame. I have no idea what I'm doing, but it's kind of like half of a square knot. So we're gonna take the two outer strands, leave the center ones alone, and we're gonna create a four and pull that far right strand over top so that that four is going underneath. And then we're gonna take that outer right cord and loop it underneath of those center two and through the left side loop. And then you're just gonna pull it nice and tight. So again, we're gonna create that four making it go underneath of that far right cord. And then that far right one is gonna go underneath of everything and up through the four. And I did find out if you pulled these too tight, it kind of made the spiral part or the twist look a little wonky. It didn't look like it was flowing naturally. So you, you wanna pull it tight, but you don't wanna pull it too tight to where it just starts looking a little funny. So the first one I made, it's a little off towards the end because I was just pulling way too tight, but it still looks good because the other two I made to go on top of it are shorter and kind of cover it up a little bit. But I did make three of these little twisted feather guys. I thought they kind of looked like arrows, so I thought it was perfect to go with this Valentine's Day theme. Once you have the stem portion as long as you want it to be, we're gonna make the feather part. So you're gonna take nine eight inch strands of the macrame cord. So I just cut one and then just measure the other ones to be that same length. Once you cut your nine cords, what you're gonna do is rip them all apart. So there's, not rip them apart, but pull them apart. So there's going to be three strands wrapped together and you just want to pull those apart. This is a four, I think it's a four millimeter cord. So in the video I watched, they said you could also then use two millimeter cord and not have to do this step. 
but you would need 26 strands. So we end up with 27 because we cut nine of them and split them into three. So the next step we're gonna do is fold that strand in half that we just cut and pulled apart. And we're gonna place it under the two center cords from our stem. And then you're gonna take another one, fold it in half again, but pull the tails of that first one through and then put the tails of the top one under. So you're kind of making like a pretzel look and then pull that tight and it's just gonna slip right up along that center cord. I hope that makes sense. I'll show it a few more times though. So again, you're just gonna fold that in half, place it underneath of those two cords in the center, take another piece, fold it in half the opposite direction and this one will go over top. So you wanna pull those ends through and then put the second ends through the other side and then pull it nice and tight. And you're gonna do this for all of the strands that you have cut and you'll have one left over. After we do that, you're gonna cut your additional strands that you used in the beginning. We're gonna cut those down to be the same length as our pieces that we just added and then unravel those as well. Then you're just gonna take, I, from the videos that I've watched, people say that using like one of those wired dog brushes is the best thing to use. So that's what I use to brush out the cord and make it like fray even more so that it didn't look as clumped together as it currently does. Here you can see I'm just brushing it out with my literally my dog's brush. <laughs> and then I also took my flat iron once I was done brushing, not once I was done, but I took my flat iron in the middle of the brushing and straightened out all of the strands. And then I did give it one final brush to make sure it was all nice and smooth. And the last thing I did was take just a piece of paper and cut out like a teardrop shaped template to resemble the feather. And I'm just gonna cut the macrame frayed part along this template to make that feather look. And like I said, I made three of these. I alternated the lengths of them so that they would all sit a little differently. And that was it. This turned out so well. I love the boho style of it and it's just so neutral and can definitely stay up all year long. Let me know what you guys think of this one in the comments. And this last project is so simple and I just really love it. It's so sentimental to me. My son is deaf and hearing. So when I saw this, I love you ASL sign at Joann's, I knew I had to pick it up and do something with it. So I just took the backing of a picture frame that I had laying around and I'm sorry for the shadow in this part of the video. I don't know what happened with my lighting, but I um, just took a the back of a picture frame and I'm gonna use that as my base and then I had this le red leather Oh my goodness leather remnant pack that I got from Hobby Lobby and one of the scraps in there was wide enough to fit around This picture frame. I think it's like a four by six size. It's not very big But I'm gonna cut that down to fit around the frame and then I just painted my I love you sign black and I'm gonna hot glue the leather right down to that picture frame backer. And you might be wondering what deaf and hearing means. My son 
was born deaf, but he wears cochlear implants, so he can hear, but without them, he is deaf. So that is what deaf and hearing means for anyone who didn't know. But I'm just gonna hot glue my I love you sign right down to somewhat the center of my leather backing. And then I just took some more of this macrame cord. Again, this was a scrap that I had left over from that heart project. And I'm gonna use that as a border to go around the outside of my frame. And that was it, this was so simple. I wish I could have recorded his reaction. He didn't know I got this and I showed it to him. I wish I could have showed you or recorded his reaction. I did hit record right after showing it to him, but I missed that very initial reaction. He was so surprised and loved it so much. It made me so happy. He actually decided he wanted to keep it in his bedroom on his um, baseball trophy and baseball game ball display, so I let him have it. But you'll see here in a second the part that I did get to record. Dude, how did you even do the line so correct, dude? <laughs> That's amazing. It's amazing? Yeah. That's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed these Valentine's Day projects. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite, and I'll see you next time.